Hello, my friends. Alonzo here. Welcome to another episode of the Let's Make Synthwave so uh, show. Today it's episode number nine. And good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in this beautiful world. I hope that you're ready for some awesome synthwave. Cool. Alrighty. Today, like I mentioned, episode nine, um, we have some very cool stuff prepared. I will only be using a Roland Jupiter 8 emulation for all my synth needs, and I will be using Yamaha RM50 samples for all my drum needs as well. Today's live stream is going to last for two hours. During the first hour, I'm going to be creating uh, an 8-bar loop, or as I call it, a main stack, which will serve as the foundation for a quick and dirty 60 to 90 second track that we will be creating then over the, the second half of this live stream so all in all it's going to be around two hours of making music live and explaining things as i go so grab your favorite beverage and keep it close cool so let's get right into it and i see here in the chat enrique rick and harp and tramaxian thank you very much guys for being here simply dojo members in the house and before we start i just wanted to take like a minute or so to talk about the Roland Jupiter 8. The Roland Jupiter 8 came out in the early 80s, I think 1981 or something, and it, for a while, it was Roland's flagship synthesizer, meaning the best that they had to offer. And it offered eight voices of polyphony, it had um, two envelopes to control the, the amp and to control the filter, had a bunch of really cool features, and it came at a very high ticket price. Here we see that it started selling for $5,300, but back then, this amount adjusted for inflation would be $18,000 today. So back then and today, it was a, a lot of money to own one of these. This is why only big name artists like Michael Jackson, touring artists and big studios could afford getting a, a Jupiter 8 because of the of the cost. It's like a like a compact car or, I don't know, the down payment for the mortgage of your house definitely was a lot of money, right? Back then, <laughs> as it is now. And over the years, there were some changes in the um, uh, in the t technology and the features. They made it better. Um, the, the first edition didn't come with MIDI, but then they uh, improved on that. But in any case, if you go on YouTube and search, uh, I don't know, songs made with Roland Jupiter or famous patches, you'll hear tons and tons of of uh, very cool tracks from the 80s and also some recent tracks that use the Roland Jupiter 8. Alrighty, so with that out of the way, let's get down into business. Today, I want to do something in, in the style of, let's say, early 2012 outrun. Think of Tommy 86, maybe a little bit of uh, Miami Nights 1984. Something that sounds high octane, fast, very punchy in your face, grimy, um, super, uh, super, super compressed and saturated. That's what I want to go for today. And here are some some stuff that I wanted from the get go to to include in my track. OK, here are my notes. The tempo we're going to use today is 140 BPM. The scale just for simplicity's sake, of course, you could pick any scale or key that you want. And typically, a, a minor scale will work very well for this kind of music. I picked a, a minor, obviously being the most popular scale because it doesn't have any sharps or, or, or flats. It's just natural wide keys on your keyboard. And we're going to use a very simple progression consisting of a minor, a G major, E minor, A minor. In Roman numerals, this would be the the one the seven the five and the one now there are many popular chord progressions that you could use in a minor scale or key this is just one of them another very popular one is doing let's say in a minor doing a minor g f major back to g major that would be the in the air tonight by phil collins this is a variation of that and of course, if you go online, there's tons and tons of, uh, of, of minor chord progressions that are very popular. This one will work just as well. Now, in terms of parts, because I want the music to really be uh, high octane, in your face, with a lot of punch, power, and grit, 
I'm not going to create too many elements because the, the more elements that you have, um, the, the less that you can hear each one. So you lose a little bit of power, right? So for this kind of mix, I'm going to go with uh, this kind of arrangement or, or track. Four or five elements at the most. I want to have definitely bass, drums, a lead, and some kind of pad. And I think we'll stop there and see if we need, need anything else. And in terms of the bass, I'm going to use a standard fat line bass kind of patch with a very strong sidechain. The fat line bass originates from the Korg Poly 6. And you can hear it on tons and tons of synthwave tracks. I think the fat line bass kind of patch is my go-to for 99% of my tracks. So I remade that patch on the uh, Juno 8 emulation that I'm going to use. In terms of the drums, I want a very fat classic drum machine kind of sound i'm not going to use samples um that are uh, that, that feel modern it, they are classic drum machine samples in this case if i'm not mistaken i will double check it's yamaha arm 50 this is not uh, a, a drum machine as known as the the lin lindrum lm1 or the um the drum tracks etc but it came out of thinking in the um the late 90s, no, late 80s, maybe early 90s, and had a lot of those sounds from the classic drum machines, but other sounds that are super punchy. In any case, I will be treating these drum samples with a short uh, room reverb, especially on the hatch and, and the snare. I'm going to leave my kick um, without any kind of reverb. Then the lead, I want to do something that has uh, a lot of melody, melodic and rhythmic movement. So it's not going to be static held notes. I wanted to um i want it to change and to have some like like a kind of a fast pace to go along with the music and the pads i want to create something dreamy uh, dreamy chords first i'll use inversions to make sure that when i change from one chord to the next there aren't big jumps between the the notes um so that's kind of like flattening the the chord structures with their uh, we minimize change or big jumps and then i'm gonna see if i can use certain suspensions uh, suspended seconds or suspended fourths just so we can make the sound more dreamy and definitely we're gonna also use a very strong sidechain another thing that is not typical of me is that as i'm creating the parts and as i'm uh, building the 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 eight bar loop this um, um the main stack i'm gonna be focusing on the punch the power and the tone of each one of the elements i'm gonna be applying tape emulation saturation distortion strong um some strong EQ moves, some strong compression. So as we're building this thing, it has the punch and power that we're looking for. Alrighty, enough talk. Let's get into the music. Greetings, guys. Thank you very much for joining. All right. So let's see. Let's see what we got. In terms of bass, this is our standard sound for today. And I'll tweak it as I go along. This is a fat line bass patch that I created. And I'll be using the Jupiter 8V by Arturia, which is a great Jupiter 8 emulation. I love the Arturia synths. I have the V collection. It's like, I don't know, 30 plus uh, synths and pianos from the 70s, 80s, the 90s, etc. It's a really awesome collection. And this is our fat line bass kind of patch. If I want it, I may increase the decay to open it up just like this or make it more plucky and staccato but I'm gonna leave it there for now then our drums let me double check wow that's really punchy yeah this is Yamaha RM50 and these drum samples, I can't. Uh, I got them from a drum collection that was making the rounds a few years ago called Vintage Drums and Keys. You may find it if you look it up on Reddit or something. Uh, this is, uh, these drum samples are not included in this free synthwave dojo collection. Again, this is Yamaha RM50. Uh, you may find them, I think, on the KB6 website. They also have a huge drum collection. In any case, this is our kick. Very strong, punchy, the snare. As well the hi-hats are okay nothing out of the ordinary this are collapse crash and our cowbell i'm not sure if i'm gonna use the, the cowbell and the, the clap our foundation is definitely gonna be the kick 
the snare and the hats, which just right out of the gate, they sound very, very cool. To be honest, I tweaked the volume envelope on the kick a little bit. Let me deactivate this and let's hear how it sounds. It's way long than I wanted, and towards the end, it has like this kind of a, I don't know, digital aliasing in the tail. I don't know if you can hear it, depending on your monitors and headphones. But I, I felt this, um, the kick is too long for what I wanted. I want my, my drums to be very tight, punchy, and uh, right in your face. So I tweaked the volume envelope to make it shorter. Most drum samplers or drum groove players, whatever they're called in your DAW, will have a feature to tweak the volume envelope. Um, it may be called something else, maybe ADSR or only ADR. In any case, I just um, brought the tail in a little bit to make the sound shorter. And the other drums, I think I left as they are. And of course, if I wanted to, I could make this snare shorter, for example, like this. Maybe shorter. But maybe that's too short, or maybe that's exactly what you were going for. For now, I'm going to leave it like that. Okay, so I'm just starting off with a very simple pattern, which is kick on the 1 and 3, snare on the 2 and 4. Very standard rock and pop backbeat. Um, the hi-hats, I'm not sure right now what they're going to do. So I just uh, programmed this very um, simple beat. Okay, cool. And like I mentioned, let me now cover some of the processing that I've applied already to these drums and that I will continue applying as we go along to all my other parts. We see here in the kick that um, I have an EQ cutting off the lows. I have a cut at 250 hertz to remove some of the boxiness. I've, I have a boost here to, in, um, to increase the, the kick beater attack. I have a tape emulation plugin. And before you see all the plugins that I've used here, any plugins that come stock with your DAW, any EQ will work just fine. There are plenty of tape emulation plugins that are free. I don't remember. Uh, there's one that's called like Con or something like that. I may look it up later. But also that works very well. Um, saturation plugins, mostly your DAW already comes with one. So it's, it's fine if you use stock plugins. You don't have to have the exact same ones. I'm just going to show you what I'm doing with the sounds. So here, this tape plugin, I'm using 7.5 inch uh, per second as a tape speed. I'm increasing the amount just to get some nice punch. In terms of saturation, I'm using gentle saturation. Not enough to to hear the kick distort like this. But enough to provide a little bit more density, a little bit more uh, like a soft clipping to the sound. And both the tape and the saturation, it's not like I remove them and you go, oh, wow, man, now, yeah, it's like heaven and earth or black or white, right? It's like there, it's like a tiny quality, maybe five to 6% change but as I add the tape, add the saturation, add the compression, then we start really to, to, to feel a difference, right? Not uh, on just one specific plugin, but as I add all these plugins, it does make a, uh, a difference. So we have a gentle saturation. In terms of compression, again, any um, compression plugin that you have around will work just fine. I just like this one. And I'm using for drums where I want a punchy sound, my go-to compression settings are 30 milliseconds attack time, 50 milliseconds release, 4 to 1 ratio, a hard knee. Then I just tweak the threshold, bring it down until I see between 3 to 5 dB of gain reduction. I could go higher, but to me, the drums start to sound a little squashed. So 3 to 4 is in like an okay compression range for me. We could go higher if we wanted to. And the uh, other thing that I'm doing is I'm using this free plugin called DP Meter 5 by TB Pro Audio, which you can, um, I mentioned it's free, right? You can go and look it up. 
And the cool thing about this plugin, and I'll, I'll show you once I add some other sounds, is that it can help me just boost the sound to where it gets, or normalize the sound to where it gets close to uh, zero dBFS, as, as loud as it can go. Just again, to gain stage my sounds and to get them very loud and punchy up front. Okay, so that's our kick. For the snare, I'm using the same kind of processing. Here's an EQ with a high pass applied at 100 hertz. Let me apply a cut at 250. You may or may not need it. Yeah, I want to take out some of that boxiness. I don't think I need a boost here in the high end. In any case, just like that. Then tape saturation. Gentle saturation. And the compressor. 30 milliseconds. Attack, 52 milliseconds release. Ratio 4 to 1. Hard knee. Now let me bring the threshold down. Until I see 3 to 6 dB of gain reduction. Oh, <laughs> I was turning the wrong knob. I was like, why am I not seeing any gain reduction here? <laughs> Silly me. There. I could push it higher, but then it starts to sound like too squashed. Again, like 3 to 5 dB of gain reduction is the safe zone. You could get away with 6 or 7, even more, depending on the sound. Let's go with 6. I feel adventurous today. Okay, we're losing a little bit of gain, so I'm going to compensate. Okay, there we go. And finally, like I mentioned, we're going to use DP meter just to normalize the sound and get it as, uh, as close to zero dbfs as we can so we're gonna set the gain here to zero make sure that the reference level is zero dbfs and let me activate the plugin otherwise it's not going to do anything and here it tells me that this snare hit is peaking at minus 4.2 if i just click this button here it's gonna raise the loudness to get to zero so it's going to get way louder. Cool. Then I will just adjust my fader. But I know that this sound is as loud as it can go without clipping. I could do that. Not today. Some other time. These are our drums for now. Same deal with the hi-hat. And I know that I'm probably going into too much detail this time. But I think it's, it's worth it. Okay, if I, if I focus on the hi-hat, I'm going to apply high-pass filter to get rid of all the crud that I don't want. This is all that I'm leaving out. A lot of low-mid frequencies that I don't want. I want my hi-hats to be very crispy, not clunky. Okay, I could add some high-end, but I think this high-end is already piercing enough okay then we have some tape like I showed you a little bit of saturation okay there compressor same deal but for a hi-hat and for a crash let's say the metal sounds from a from a drum kit I don't want to bring out the attack in this case, maybe on uh, on another piece I would, but I don't want to bring out the attack on my hats or my cymbals, so I'm not going to use a 30 millisecond attack time. I'm going to use something way lower than that. For example, 3 milliseconds It's going to work just fine. I'm going to leave the release at 50 milliseconds. Ratio at 4 to 1 is going to it's going to work just well, same as with the hard knee. And then Let me bring the threshold down until I get some gain reduction. OK, 
Okay, I see that that open hat hit is very loud. Okay, back to this. Okay, you see that the open hat is not triggering the compressor oops, as much as it was before. Okay. That'll be fine. I just want a little bit of control. And... Let me reset this thing. Okay, it's telling me that it's peaking at minus 12.7. So I'm just gonna hit the match loudness button. Way louder. But not going over zero, which is exactly what I want. And now let's mix it in. And I also wanted to add a little bit of uh, of, uh, of a room sound to my snare and hats. I could, yeah, let me create a room reverb here. And any reverb plugin that you have will work. I just like this one. So I'm going to go with a kind of small room reverb, short time, mix all the way to 100% since I'm using it on an aux track, effects track, return track. All right, and I'm going to send from my snare into the boom reverb. And I will adjust the lo level of my snare. That's cool. I'm also going to send my hats into the like that. Then adjust the level as well. Same as with the snare. Okay, and one thing that I don't want is to have a lot of low end and high end on my room reverb. So I'm just going to use a stock EQ to high pass or low cut at around 200 to 300 hertz. Listen to the snare, how big it sounds, but it's also muddying up the mix. I don't want all those low frequencies in my reverb. And apply a high cut or low pass filter to the very top end. Cool. This may have been too much. I'm not sure. We'll tweak the snare and hi-hat sends to the reverb later. Cool. All right, so far so good, my friends. Let's see where we are. Take a sip of water. All righty. Let's see, let's see, let's see where we are. Okay, now the bass All right, on the bass, I have similar processing to what I showed you. I have an EQ cutting all the uh, below 60 hertz. And I'm also going to cut in the 250 range. Like a good 3 dB or so, if not more. All that honkiness and boxiness, I don't want it. And just if, as I've showed you, we have some tape. Light saturation. And in this case, I'm limiting the bass. Because I want it to be very stable and in my face all the time. And the other thing I mentioned is that I want to have a strong sidechain compression. Um, so this is volume shaper I'm going to use. There are plenty of volume shaping and ampl amplitude shaping plugins out there, both free and paid. I have a bunch of them. Um, currently, I'm just liking this 
shaper volume shaper by cable guys and here i'll just pick the shape that i like the best okay this one this is the Side chain four. Okay. All right, my friends. So far, we've only processed the bass and the drums, and we haven't done anything musical. But that's absolutely fine. All right, going back to my original notes. I said that I wanted my progression to be A minor, G major, E minor, and back to A minor. Cool. Let's do that and adjust our bass notes so we're gonna have one chord per bar and in synthwave as in rock and pop the most popular approach the approach that will always work is using the root notes of the chords in your bass line yes you can deviate from that use inversions use um, other notes passing tones etc but for the most part root notes in the bass will always work deviate from that once you have uh, built your skills and your ears to tell when it sounds good and it doesn't okay so for now i'm gonna keep things very simple and just um use root notes in our bass pattern all right so we said that the first bar is a minor the second bar is g major third bar e minor and fourth bar back to a minor You know what? And now that I'm thinking about it, <laughs> my ear is telling me instead of a minor to use as the turnaround chord in the progression, I think I'm hearing F major. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. And I'm sure that there's a um, Miami Nights 1984 track that sounds exactly like this progression. Maybe Turbo something or whatever. I don't remember, but I think <laughs> I'm recalling it. In any case, it doesn't matter because we're not remaking any particular track. We're just going for that kind of sound. Tommy 86, Miami Nights 1984, 2012 um, outrun ish kind of sound. All right, so that's the bass. Now, um, ba -ba -ba -bum let's 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 we could work on the lead or the pad just so i have something more to hold on to while i'm creating the lead let me take care of the pad all right so first off we need to find a suitable pad sound or chord sound Gladly, I have, oh my god, like, so many custom presets that I've made on the Jupiter 8. Well, these aren't so many, actually. Probably more on the Juno. So I have a few that will work just fine. So let me see. Uh, sort by type. Some of these keys will definitely work. Got an epic lead. Warm pad, phaser pad, dream. That's a very nice sound. What I'm going to do is I'm going to key in my notes first, and then I'll figure out which of these um, sounds works best. And if none of them do, then I'll just quickly create a custom patch for us today. All right. So E minor, no, not E minor, A minor, G, E, and F. A very important thing when I create the pad with the bass. So if I start my chord notes somewhere, I know I'm going to be fine. I try not to create any chord notes or pad notes in C2 or below. This is a, a good thing just so to keep your, your sounds on your bassist toes and create muddiness 
during mix and arrangement. So I'm going to start with something very standard, let's say... the chords in root position. Okay, so that's A minor. G is G, B, D. E minor is E, G, B. E, G, B. Our final chord, F major, is F, A, C, F, A, C. Okay. Cool sound. Now, I'm going to apply inversions so we don't have big jumps in the notes w when we change chords. There's a couple of ways to do that. Um, I think I will select these top notes and simply push them down an octave. And that'll still work with what I said about not having the bottom of my chords um, E to octave. Okay, cool. Now, that was the inversions part of what I wanted to do. Now, I want to see if I can use some suspensions, suspended seconds, fourths, or even sevenths to make this chord progression sound more dreamy. All right, so we see that we have this note, this B cutting across... Uh, these two chords, we find it on G major and on E minor. Maybe we could use it here for our A. And that would turn it into a suspended second chord, no longer an A minor. Sounds cool. And what if we also used to be on our last chord? Then I think this is not going to work. It sounds too dissonant. But that's fine. Alright, and what if I turned this D note into E? Same as this one. Then this would be um, D is the what the sixth. Yeah, I like it. Dreamy. All right, now let's take care of the patch. I'm liking this one. I think it sounds cool. But let's just browse some of the other ones I had. So this one sounds very cool. Wow, they all sound pretty cool to me. I'm not sure which one I'm gonna pick. Maybe the phaser one. Okay, yeah. This is a very cool sound. And let's just add some EQ. I want to chop off the low end at least to around 200 hertz. And I also want, like with the others, some tape. Push it almost into the red. I'm gonna go with seven inch speed. 
cool. Then saturation. Gonna go with gentle saturation since we're already using warm tape before this one. Here it's distorting, I don't want that. I just want the density and the soft clipping. Cool. And let's also add the volume shaping. What shape was I using on the base? Was it sidechain 4? Yes, sidechain 4. Okay, this is sounding very good. Now let's add DP meter to again raise the level of this thing as close to zero as we can. It's quite a lot. There we go. I'm gonna bring it down so I don't blast your speakers, headphones, and ears. Nice. And here on this pad, maybe we could even go a little bit crazier with a with a phaser. I'm syncing the speed parameter, the LFO rate to the beat. I think two bars sounds cool. Or four bars. Yeah, four bars I think is gonna be enough. And let's add a little bit of delay. to give it a little bit of a stereo movement and interest. Alrighty, before I do that, let me put this delay right here after Saturn, and I'm gonna deactivate DP meter. Well, I'm gonna leave it there actually, where it is, and By default, I have it to add a setting of one eighth note dotted. Okay. It's just giving us a little bit more density there. We can't hear the repeats because of the volume shaping, but that's fine. It's still adding to the density here. All right. And finally, because I've added some plugins and adjusted the the um, the gain structure, I'm going to reset DP5 and have it work its magic again. Okay, cool. Alright. I'm liking this. Cool. 
me just change the drum pattern a little bit. Yeah, simple. Just a tiny change, but to my ears, it works very well. Cool. All right. So let's see where we are. Let's duplicate this to arrive at the eight bar loop that we're working towards during this first hour so that's our pad that's our drums let's work now on creating some kind of a lead to go along with this oh and before i do that let me do something else as well I have my bass and all my drum sounds feeding this drum bus. And right from the get-go, I'm going to do something similar to what I, I did on the individual sources. Again, it's, it's stacking a little bit of tape, a little bit of saturation, a, a little bit of compression. And a little bit goes a long way because as you add a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit everywhere, it starts to accumulate and add to the sound. And in this case, let me add this Fusion Drive plugin, also kind of saturation. Cool. And a bus compressor. The settings that I'm going to use are similar to my drum punch settings with a tiny difference. So the attack is still going to be 30 milliseconds because I want the transients to poke through. However, the ratio is not going to be 4 to 1 because it's then it's going to be too much, too much compression, at least for me, to my ears. So the ratio is going to be 2 to 1. And the release, it, bus compressors typically don't have too much of a, of a fast release. In this case, 0.1, this is 100 milliseconds, which is great for this kind of use. If you wanted to compress a very short sound, like a kick or a snare, then you would use a compressor that goes down to 50 milliseconds or even less. In this case, a any bus compressor that you have, or your compressor just set, it, uh, set its release to 100 milliseconds and you'll be fine. And, I'm going to bring the threshold down until I see a good 2 dB of gain reduction happening. And I have this makeup gain to compensate for the loss in level. Okay, so this thing sounds very in your face, glued together, punchy and powerful. It's like really, boom, punching you in the face. All right, that's that. Let's get back to creating some kind of lead sound. Sip of water before we continue. I see a question there by John B. Why not use the delay in the VST? Yeah, it's a great question. Sometimes VSTs, the, the delays, the effects that they come with, reverb, chorus, etc. Sometimes they don't sound so good. Other times they do. So it's mostly a preference thing. Typically, I never use the, the onboard reverbs because they don't tend to sound so good. The, de the delay and the chorus, I do tend to use. But I think sometimes uh, it's easier for me just to, to go in the, in the channel insert and use a delay that I know that the, the parameters that I'm looking for than to open the synth and then go into the specific section of the synth where I edit the, the delay, right? 
And for example, the, the delay plugin that, I, that I've been using, Replica by Native Instruments, it has all the features that I need. And the onboard delays on the Arturia synths have a lot of those features, but not all of them, right? So yeah, if I was looking for one um, that, that that delay offers, then I could use that, right? But again, it's a matter of convenience. Uh, unless you're going for something very specific, yeah, it's up to you. Use the onboard one or any dedicated plugin that you have. All right, once more, back to our lead. Okay, let's see what sounds we have here in my custom library. This one sounds very cool. This one may be too soft. Yeah, this epic lead sound will work just fine. Let me get rid of the delay here and any of these insert effects. I'm going to keep the chorus. All right. So let's see how to approach this lead element. Something like that. Now, obviously, whatever I do has to be in the scale of A minor. So I'm going to set that up here just so it's visually easier for you guys to see the notes that I'm using. Natural minor. Okay, let me set this to A minor as well. All right, A natural minor. Okay, so basically it's all the white notes in my piano roll. And great choices for starting a melody. I'm going to be conscious of what chord I'm on because a good melody, a great lead, you have to have a good combination of chord tones and non-chord tones. So the chord tones are the tones or pitches that, that make up the chords that you're playing. Non-chord tones are other tones from the scale that aren't from the chord that you're playing. So as I as the music changes chords, I need to be aware of what chord I am in just to be able to make the best selection of notes. Uh, there's no right and wrong here. There's more dissonance and consonance and stuff that sounds weird to our ears, right? Um, and again, and if we stick primarily to chord tones, it's always going to sound good, albeit a little boring. So uh, I'm going to make sure to also include some non-chord tones in here. Alright, so good choices to start a melody are always the tonic and the fifth of the chord you're in. In the case of A minor, uh, it's A, C, E. The tonic is A and the fifth is E. So if I start with A or E, I'm going to be fine. And just to make things easier on myself, I'm going to start with an A. And where? Now, like I said, I don't want to... I'm going to make believe like C2 and C1 octaves don't exist. I'm not going to write a lead in, the, in such low ranges because it's going to clash with the octaves uh, with the bass rather uh, I'm going to be careful with using C3 because my pads are living in C3 and I'm going to step all over them so a good choice for me is to create whatever lead uh, melody to use C4 or C5 and to a certain degree the top of C3 alright so in C4 this is my A Maybe it's a little bit high to start there. So the top of C3, I think this A will do just fine. Okay, let's start with something simple just to see where we 
could go from here. And my MIDI controller is still in the shop, so I can't uh, find melodies by using my fingers, which is my preferred method. So here I'm going to have to um, pencil in the notes and move them around. Um, it's fine, just getting out of my comfort zone and doing something different. All right, what about going then to E? Okay. My ear is telling me... C. Uh -huh. Let's make the, long, the notes longer. Okay, my second chord is G major, G, B, D. There's no C, so C sounds a little tense on G. So maybe I could anticipate this D. Yeah, and I have a bunch of videos talking about melody in synthwave. Look them up. There's some playlists over in the channel. The same with creating chords and a whole all of this stuff that I'm doing today. I've explained it. I've gone to great lengths, live streams of an hour or two even, talking about all these things. Um, so if you need to brush up on your uh, music theory or learn more about how to do these things, go and watch those videos afterward. Cool. This first half of the melody, or this first portion, whatever, I'm using, let's say, long notes, leaving a lot of space. Now, this next portion or segment, I want to use faster notes, so it contrasts with this section. This is E minor, this is F major, uh, so E minor. B is in E minor. Let me try to do something like this. I wanted faster notes and not start on the downbeat. Okay, I like this. elongate this one or turn it into C okay cool now this is sounding very dry and just so it doesn't sound so dry okay what I like to do is have an aux return return track effects track and have one large hall reverb for all my synths and I send different amounts of each of my synths into the same reverb. You can do it differently. You can place a reverb on your insert channel, but I just like to, to work like this. Nothing wrong with doing it differently. It's just my, my preference. And I know right off the bat that I want to filter this reverb. I don't want the bottom end, possibly at around 215. I really don't even need to hear it. I know that it's going to be in the right range. I'm not too picky about that. Like there, if I heard something that needs adjusting, then I would come back to it. All right. And very importantly, this synth reverb also has to have the shaper box for side chaining side chain compression because i don't want the reverb if we have um the bass and other elements such as the pads with the side chain compressor a compression moving up and down the reverb is going to flatten that if it doesn't have a side side chain compression itself so i'm gonna already enable that here Cool, and back to our lead. I'm going to create a send to the synth reverb. Okay. 
ओके इट्स गिविंग इट अ लिटिल बिट अ लिटिल बिट ऑफ बॉडी एंड डेप्थ एंड लेट्स आल्सो यूज अ डिले सो इट डजंट साउंड सो ड्राई Okay. Increase the feedback. Increase the mix. Or actually, decrease the mix. sure if we should go with ping pong or standard maybe dual want to pan the delay repeats off center very wide Okay, cool. Let's continue writing this melody. Hearing faster notes here. than what i currently have okay this c sounds tense on this e minor right My ear is telling me to go high. Something like that maybe. Our last chord is F. So it's F A C. Let's go with F for now. I know I don't like it. That's exactly what my ear was telling me. Now let's adjust the start times to introduce some syncopation. Yeah. I'm hearing an A. somewhere here maybe whoops yeah i like it okay A tried and true approach is if you're looking for an 8 bar melody is not to write 8 bars of music or 8 different bars. You can chunk uh, the 8 bars of melody into two 4 bar phrases. Two 4 bar phrases. Yeah. Okay, so this is our first phrase spanning 4 bars. So I'm just going to duplicate this and introduce some change the second time around.
So here is where I want to introduce said change. A G E F. Okay. G. liking this okay let me get rid of this whole thing some short notes go high here we're still in E minor going to F I like it. This part towards the end, I'm not too convinced. Yeah, I like it. And here's the thing, I'm not going for perfection. I <laughs> I can't write a perfect melody in, I don't know, five minutes that I've dedicated to this. For this exercise, for what I'm trying to do, I just want to find something that works within the context of what I'm going for. So if this were a, um, a formal track of mine, I may revisit it at a later time. But for now, it's got all the elements that I want. And if you just look at the notes, you'll see that we have a good balance of long notes and short notes, okay? And also, we see notes that start on the downbeats uh, and notes that don't start on the downbeat, like these, which are syncopated. So it's always great for writing melodies to use chord tones and non-chord tones, as we've used here, and also use notes that land on the downbeats and that don't land on the downbeats and that are um, longer and shorter, right? Otherwise, it's going to be a very boring melody. So let's just listen to it one more time. Okay, it works very well. Let's add our processing. Again, I'm going to get rid of the lows. Around there, and also the high highs. There's like a digital fizziness up in the high register. That definitely want to get rid of to achieve a warmer sound like so and let's add the standard fare of 
tape. And saturation. Gentle saturation. This one, I may want to push higher to get a little bit of distortion uh, to give more grit, body, and character to the lead so it doesn't sound like so squeaky clean. It already is distorting a little, but let's see. What about... No, oh, that, that's too much. I'm gonna keep it at heavy, maybe. Yeah, right there. distorting a lot saturating okay there then I'm gonna compress this thing just so it doesn't jump from note to note so it's very like flat and in our face this is an LA 2A emulation whatever other plug-in um, any standard compressor will work this one just has one knob that I need to turn to get the compressor that I want and this is not useful on drums it's very useful on bass and synths so I'm just gonna increase the peak reduction until I see between 5 and 7 dB and to be honest I don't even need to listen to it because I know that this is such a smooth compressor that it's gonna sound good then I'm just gonna bring the gain to where it was. Okay. So the compressor is flattening the peaks and making it very stable, uh, very well packed, condensed, and in our face. Finally, Let's use DP meter again. Okay. Alright, and that, my friends, is the main stack that we created today, consisting of only four elements, bass, um, bass, drums, lead, and a pad. I think we don't need anything, anything else for what we're trying to accomplish here today. Now, let me just take a minute or two to do a quick mix. Okay, that'll work just fine. Now let me come to the synth bus. Apply some tape. And apply some compression to the synth bus.
रखें I like things where they are very much. All right, cool. So that's our main stack. Now we're going to take a two minute break. And when we come back, we're going to turn this main stack or eight bar loop into a quick and dirty 40 bar arrangement um, as kind of practice, which I call a basic kata. So, I'll come back in two minutes. Don't go anywhere. Or actually, if you want to, take a bathroom break or get a beverage, warm beverage, hot beverage, cold beverage, whatever you want. I'll be back in two minutes. All right, all right, all right. Welcome back. Welcome back, my friends. Let's see where we are. Okay, turning this main stack into a quick and dirty arrangement. 40 bars, like 90 seconds of music. And I recommend you guys get good at doing this. First, creating a main stack within an hour or so. You don't need five hours or six hours to create a main stack. Within an hour is perfectly fine. Four or five elements, you don't need more to start a track. Then, if you've never made a full length track before, don't attempt to do that. Instead, use this milestone approach that I um, that I talk about a lot, which is first get good at, at creating a 40 bar arrangement like this, then you graduate to creating an 80 bar arrangement, not um, like not the same track, right? A different track. You go from main stack to 40 bar arrangement, then from main stack to 80 bar arrangement. And once you get good at creating an 80 bar arrangement, a full length track is like 100, 110 or 120, give or take. So it's going to be very easy for you to, to go the distance from 80 bars to 110 bars, as opposed to trying to go from 8 bars to 110, I guarantee that you're gonna um, you're gonna be frustrated. It's gonna be very painful, and for the most part, you're not gonna be able to finish tracks in a very long while if you try to do that. Of course, if you have the experience and if you can make full length tracks, then forget about the 40 and 80 bar arrangements. But if you're a beginner, never made any full length tracks before, don't go that route. Experiment, get good at 40 bars, then 80 bars, then graduate to um, a full length track. All right. Without further ado, I do consider, for the most part, the main stack to be the, um, the most energetic part of the track. You could call it the chorus, you could call it the drop the main section, whatever you want to call it, it doesn't matter, okay? So first, I'm going to do um, something, I would say very quick and dirty. I'm just going to copy this over, okay, into my core section, which is what I'm calling it, all right? Then I'm going to just randomly copy and paste different elements over the, the different sections. So all of the, uh, each of these sections is eight bars long. We have an intro eight bars, a verse eight bars, chorus eight bars, bridge eight bars, outro eight bars, the total of 40 bars. All right, and we're going to try to create a smooth experience from beginning to end using automation, using effects, this or that, right? Um, and all in the next 40, 45 minutes or so. All right, now, from here, I certainly know that I want the bridge to have the bass and the drums. I don't want the bridge to have the lead. Okay, for this exercise, you know what? I'll create a new sound. I'm going to call it like a pluck. Oops. I want a pluck for the bridge. Okay, then for the verse, I know for a fact that I want all the elements from my chorus except the lead. The lead, I'm going to save it for the chorus. Okay, so, so the bridge, bass, and drums. If I, don't, if I don't have time, I will just keep the pad going on the bridge and use some kind of rhythmic effect to introduce a little bit of change. But if I have time, I will write a new part or pattern for it. All right, the verse we said that it's going to be the same thing as the chorus, sans <laughs> the lead, and the intro, the outro. What can we do? Well, um, a very standard approach, approach that works very well, 
that I typically do for these live streams is I will start the, the track in a certain way and I will end it the same way but in the opposite. Like if I start the, the track with the, let's say the, the kick and the bass filtering in the elements, then I'll do the same thing on the outro, but I'll filter out the elements, right? That's a very standard thing to do um, for, for your tracks. Um, for this one, I know we could do something different in the sense that I want to start only with the kick and I want to start with a different bass pattern. Now, this bass pattern is certainly going to be uh, based on our main chord progression. Okay, and I'm not sure if it's going to have a pad or whatnot, but let's just work on this for a second. Okay, first of all, I don't want... Well, let me do this this way. I want the intro to feel like it's on standby, so it's not moving harmonically, meaning I'm not going to play any other chord besides the tonic, A minor. So it's going to give it a feeling that we're stuck there, or like we're revving our engines, something's going to happen. We're in a holding pattern. And what we could do is find some notes here to spice things up. For example, the fifth, E. What about this? And then here. Yeah, something like that will work. So I'm going to duplicate. Yeah, just a tiny little bit of something different to get us going. I'm going to color this differently. Then duplicate. All right. And this is our intro. And I said that for the drums, I wanted this thing to be kick only. Like that. What about some hi-hat accents here or there? <laughs> Let me show you a very cool trick. Okay, I want this open hi-hat to sound here during the, what is this, the, the, the last eighth note before this downbeat. But I want it to close very quickly. Now, how do I do that? The way to do that at least the way that I have it uh, programmed in my um, drum plugin, is that both hi-hats are on what's called an exclusive group, so they are both not going to sound at the same time. One will cut the other short, okay? So, to cut this one short, I'm going to play a closed hi-hat here. However, I don't want this closed hi-hat to sound, so what I'll simply do, this is a very neat trick is bring the velocity down so it's still gonna mute or close off the open hat but it's not gonna make any sound sneaky sneaky right what about this Okay, let me set it to 16th notes. Right. And I can just rinse and repeat and introduce some other variations. About a snare hit here.
Nice. Nice. That'll work just fine. And what about if we start with a crash, which we haven't used thus far? Crash, crash, crash. Cool. But let's work on this crash very quickly. Okay, so the crash already has some of the stuff that I, that I showed you, the tape, the saturation, this and that. And just for fun, I want my crash to have a ping pong delay. Nice. So it like trails off into the distance. Nice. Okay, and speaking of crashes, I definitely want the crash to be on the downbeat of every major section. So we'll do that and forget about the crashes. All right. Okay, so far so good. This will work well for the intro. I have an idea that maybe, let's say, ideas. I have this little notepad here in my DW Studio One. What if we used a bandpass filter during intro? And I'll come back to that if I have time. But now, let's head into the verse. Okay, I think I need a little bit of a stronger drum fill or something to signal that we're coming to the verse. So, here. Okay, let me get rid of this. that yeah that works now Okay. Okay. Because the tempo is very high, 140, bars are going by very, very fast. So what I'm going to do is change my initial idea of doing a 40 bar arrangement. And I'm going to elongate at least the verse just so we have a little bit of time to introduce the pad. I think that'll be enough. And possibly... duplicate the chorus. We'll see. Okay, in this pad, I don't want it to start here. What I'm gonna do is... Do we have a filter? Okay, I'm going to simply use whatever filter plugin you have that you know and love will work here. 
standard fare is having a low pass filter that's closed and you open it up towards the the next section so warm 24 db like start lower like this And this is how we'll do it. Okay. I'm going to create an automation lane for that cutoff. And I think we're gonna let me create that node there and there start fairly low maybe not so low That'll work just fine. That will get us going through the twice as long verse now. And here towards the end, I just want a tiny drum fill. Let me see where I am. work again i'm not going for perfect fills i would tweak that later for now i just need something that keeps me going keeps helps me keep making progress and we could pull back the bass Yeah, that'll work. We could drop a crash here just so it doesn't sound so dry. So I think our verse is done. I could create some other attention reboots here and there. But I think once our ear starts to pick up that pad that's filtering into existence, we can keep listening for a while. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna call it done. And here's the thing. Okay, we have our intro, verse, chorus, 
bridge and I like to do this in all my productions which is I'll make notes and once I'm happy with something for example the verse I will call it done this is a reminder that I'm not gonna do anything else to it and I'm gonna take it off my mind because if you're constantly thinking about how can I make it better how can I make it better you start tweaking and endlessly thinking about every tiny little detail that ultimately doesn't matter that much right so I'm just gonna call it done for now for today and I'm not gonna do anything else until I have a great idea or something but at least it's not um, itching me that there's something wrong that needs to be fixed nothing is wrong maybe I could enhance it in some way but there's nothing wrong that needs fixing cool I'm just gonna call it done all right the intro that's where I said maybe band piss filter all right I'm gonna take that from here not sure about the the chorus though let's see Alright, I'm not going to do anything else to the course, except, similar to the verse, I'm going to create this little bit of a, of a moment where there's some space or rest. That'll work. Cool. So let's bring back the bridge and the outro. Still not right. Now, yeah, I think there was an extra snare hit there at the end. Same as last time. Let's use a crash here so it doesn't sound so naked. Okay, cool. Let's listen to the chorus.
think the course is done. I don't have any better ideas. All right, bridge. Let's see, you have 20 odd minutes to go still. Yeah, I think we could try out something different for the for the bridge. Like a pluck. Let's see. All right. Let's go into my sound bank. Let's look for something maybe plucky. 80s keys. I think this could work. We'll just make it plucky like so, bringing down the sustain all the way down. And then bring the decay to about halfway. Alright, that'll work. I'll tweak the sound when I have my part here ready. Alright. Let's create a kind of um arpeggiated texture. Kind of a Berlin school music type of deal without trying to be uh, very specific about that. So let me see. We can do a continuous pattern, maybe of eighth notes. We were in A minor last time I checked. Okay, so let's check it out. I'm gonna create this entire thing. Okay, let me work on the sound just a little bit. to do is fire up the delay okay now we're gonna edit some of these notes so it's not a constant constant stream of A's throughout the whole thing uh, let's build in some syncopation by using tones from scale. And I'm gonna do this randomly at first, and then I'll tweak as I as I go along. Let's see where we are. Didn't like this note, but in any case, one bar, two bar. Yeah, what about that? Yeah, I like that. And as we always do, Let's just duplicate this and introduce some variation. Maybe here.
nice. I like it. Now, I think this is a pretty cool technique to use every now and then, but I've been using a lot these days. Now let's bring some of these notes down like so. Right. And here. Cool. And in the interest of time, I'm not going to do the, the whole tape saturation thing. And you know what? Maybe I should. Right? Right. Let's not be lazy. Very quickly. That doesn't take much time. Saturn, gentle saturation. And after that, the compressor. Nice. Maybe some reverb. Just a touch. And some EQ. Some high cut. Cool. I think that sound is going to work quite well. So let's get rid of that. Very cool. Yeah, I think this will work very well for a bridge. And all I need before I put Don in there is create a drum fill. But this time, I'm not going to create the gap. I'm just going to type in the drum fill here. Nice. Yep. Okay, let's listen to the bridge.
Cool. I like the bridge. I'm going to call it done. Let's work on the outro and the intro. Okay, so like I mentioned, great strategy. Ending the same way you start. So let's use this bass intro pattern. The same with the drums. Here maybe we could bring back this pad. Okay, but instead of having notes that change following a progression, because there's no progression here at the end, let's just stay on A minor throughout the whole thing. But maybe a suspension. Maybe the suspended second. Or fourth. Whoops. The fourth. gonna turn it into a different color okay That'll work very nice. Oops. Cool. I'm going to call the outro done. I'm thinking whether if I do the band pass filter thing, if I should do it at the end as well. Not sure. Let's try to do the bad pass filter thing on the intro, and if we like it, maybe do it on the outro, since we still have a few minutes to go. Alright, so let's see. My idea was to... Okay, let me see. What's the easiest way to do this would be to just drop the filter right here in my master fader. Okay, that's the shaper, filter shaper, filter. I'm going to put it after the tape. And I think a band pass would work quite well. 24 dB per octave. We could introduce a little bit of movement in the filter. By using these shapes. That's too fast. And too much. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Cool. I think that'll work. Now... What I definitely need to do is... 
automate the filter coming in and out was it this one Yeah. Another thing I can do is also automate this caught off. Here we can do a uh, cool filter move. Not sure exactly why, uh, how, I mean. Kind of, kind of like that. What if, what if, what if? This is the kind of detail that uh, that could take a long while to nail right. But let's see how this goes. Yeah, I like that it's a, a sudden and abrupt change from where we were. Kind of to catch the listener by surprise. Yeah, I like it. I could tweak it a little bit more, but I think for now, I'm going to call it done. Now, going back to the question whether we should do the filter thing at the end. I don't know. We could, but I'm going to leave it like that. Now, I think I did all the things that I wanted to do to this piece. Definitely, when I play it back top to bottom in a few minutes, we may feel that certain sections maybe aren't long enough. Um, like maybe the intro is too abrupt and that we went too quickly from the verse into the chorus. And that's fine. Remember that this is just practice. We're creating this 40 bar arrangement that overall is a... Um, satisfying journey for the listener it's got a beginning and end it's got a bridge like a climax um we go up we go down in intensity and emotion and these are the kinds of things that we need to practice how to do before we can tackle a full length track right so we're developing building our skills learning how to use automation filters effects this and that and doing some very quick um i would say broad strokes arrangement you saw that i just uh, copied my main stack into the course then I just copied stuff all over it and I wasn't like thinking about every bar like painstakingly where do I go from here just very roughly did it like this and in my full tracks to be honest I, I do it in a very similar fashion I copy my main stack into the course and from there there I see okay what do I want to come before and after start copying and pasting and it's a very quick um, very quick process right like the first part then it's all about tweaking the the sections and and then adding some attention reboots here and there uh to keep the listeners attention and, and engagement but overall it's very uh, it's very quick it's not like if we had spent three hours on this alone it would be better i don't think so in any case um i was thinking about something that i forgot okay let me just revisit the mix very quickly just to make sure that the that all the elements are where I want them to be.
Okay. Yeah, I like that where it is. Let me just listen to the bridge. Okay, let me add. DP meter. I just wanted to make sure that once we leave the chorus and we come into the bridge, that the level of the pluck and the chorus lead feel right. It's not like they have to be the same or one louder than the other. They just have to feel right for, for the part, right? And I do like it. Okay, now the outro. I like that. I like it very much where, where the pad is. Everything, actually. Let's just do one final tweak before we call this a day. And it's I want to engage my bus compressor on my master fader. The settings that I use are just like the bus compressor for my drums. 30 milliseconds attack, ratio of 1.5. Maybe, maybe we could do two feel adventurous and release as fast as this one goes which is a hundred milliseconds now pull down the threshold till I see between two and four dB of gain reduction and compensate the loss of gain with the makeup Okay, cool. Let's see where we are. I think we're done, my friends. The sections are ready. You saw that um, we used a little bit of automation here and there. Nothing to go crazy about. This um, tiny track didn't need more than this. Um, I think it's very punchy, very in-your-face powerful. So what we'll do is just listen uh, to this thing from top to bottom without any commentary on my part then we'll come back and okay let me just do this real quickly cool all right so here it goes final playthrough
all right my friends yeah there's some audio dropouts here and there here and there because i have a bunch of plugins in my session i'm live streaming the obs i'm also recording this thing so it's a lot of strain on my computer and towards the end of a production you have a, a some drop dropouts here and there i hope that it wasn't too bad or at least if it was maybe the the recording will sound better in any case all right so that's all that i had today for you guys as you saw, we created an idea in around an hour. Then we turned that idea into a 40 bar. Well, it's not 40 bar anymore. 60 bar, 70, whatever. It's a very short idea that presents a nice experience for the listener. We practice automation, leveling, using uh, effects and all that cool stuff. All put to the test and applied all, all the skills that you need to develop and use while creating your music. I hope that you found this useful. As always, if you have any questions, just let me know in the chat or in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one. Keep synthwaving, my friends. Let's keep synthwave alive. Ciao.